Hey, I'm doing a live video with Bruno and we're just trying to work it out. We've been working it out for a little bit now, but once he can get on and we can both see each other's faces, it will be great, I'm sure. But he needs to jump on and send a request. Something's wrong with his connection. I'm I'm just saying that like, I did a, I did like an hour and a half of live videos yesterday. Can he request? Yep. View ex add. I'm not just trying to talk to me on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I can see you now. It was just grainy before. It was, well, before I couldn't see anything. Now it's a little bit grainy, so I'm going to assume it's, it's your connection. Maybe. Oh, it's funny because I'm actually using my 4G. Oh, I'm on 5G. Bad. It's a bit laggy, but I can... It's so laggy for him. Man, he's moved like this much. Okay. I can't hear you now. I don't know what's going on. On a solo live video. I don't know. I can't hear you. I can't. I can see bits. E. Hi again. I know we're just trying our hardest here. It's only, well, that's why we wanted to do a joint live video. Maybe we should. <sighs> is it blurry for other people? Or is my connection good? Is his odd or is it blurry for both of us? But we did like a flawless joint live video a while ago. Can you see my everything okay? Yeah, I can't hear Bruno, Bruno. Bruno's entered another realm of existence. No, it's not what. He left. Okay, but when he was live by himself, it was. And, and now he's gone. Bruno comes and goes. Okay, well. I just okay, so I'm one hundred percent okay. View request. I can see you both fine. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yes, I got it. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. Yeah. Did you it's know working. what it was? No, nope. I just clo I closed everything and opened everything again. You know, basic, <laughs> basic, basic technology stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'll make sure I save this. It's just been a, an adventure trying to get this live <laughs> video to work. Yeah, it's been twenty minutes we've been trying. All right, oh, we we're on. Cool. And then when we tried the Facebook one, the boys were playing with lightsabers out in the garden anyway. So I was like, oh, really? I don't know if you saw that. But was... Yeah, I saw some lightsabers there, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Bruno is uh, so bad. He's always so bad. Okay, he's he's always says that. It's just, uh, I'm not bad, I'm just poor. My phone is four years old, all right? Just chill. <laughs> all right, so what are we talking about? We are talking about how to be professional in the modeling and photography industry and how to interact with each other um, well and some examples of, you know, what not to do and all that fun stuff. And then people can ask us questions and stuff like that, I guess. So I don't know. Bruno like, had so many dot points and I was like, yeah, similar, but yeah, here's mine. So I don't know if Bruno wants to start or if we have more photographers than models at the moment. So maybe if people like comment if they're a photographer or a model or I don't know, that yeah. might be good. We have, yeah, we have quite a few um, photographers there, I think. Um, 
Oh, there's some people unable to join. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, we have a few photographers there, so I think we can... Um, well, we can probably start talking about, you know, again, the TFP, because it, it's for both. Um, yeah. yeah? Yeah, TFP, let's talk about TFP. All right, and do you want to do something like uh, we will just talk about the topics we have and then we do a, a Q&A at the end so we don't have to keep yeah, looking at the we'll questions? Do that. Yeah, I'll keep like, and well, as they come up, I guess, and then we'll do like a straight Q&A at the end and we'll finish this at like eight maybe. And yeah, any, yeah. anything can apply for makeup artists too. Totally, I think so. Yep. Mm. Okay, yeah. so TFB. You know, that thing that we are always talking about. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you want me to start? Yeah, you can start. Yeah. More photographers right. are here, so you need to start. Okay. So, yeah. Um, it's always like the discussion about, you know, should you do TFP as a photographer or not? Um, uh, I just, I think TFP became something so bad that uh, I don't want to call that. Uh, it's more about um, not even collaboration. It's just uh, like like what we do. We don't really do TFP per se. I mean, we shoot, and then we try to get something out of the shoot that we did, right? Yeah, so I wouldn't call it that as TFP. Um, that would be just maybe more portfolio-based or just you do a... Oh, so TFP means trade for print, correct? Someone's asking what the acronym yeah, or, is. Or, so or time for print like, or time for photos. Lots time of for photos. Um, yeah. Where either the model... Where, basically, where the model uh, does free photos or the photographer does free photos and it's just model does time and the photographer says, here are photos in return or the photographer reaches out to a model yeah. and it's just or not just models and photographers the whole team you can have a yeah. team of two, uh, 10 people um, yeah uh, and basically no one is charging anyone everyone gets together to create something that will be useful for everyone for a portfolio um and that is w what's supposed to be but what happens uh is um People don't realize that it has to be beneficial for all sides. And that's why every time we do a live, I think last time we did it, and we always write this thing as well. My story with Annalise was a bit like that, right? I was starting out probably four years ago. I had a handful of photos in my portfolio. They were not great because I was just starting. And I messaged Annalise, who had already like three, four years experience, asking for a TFP shoot, right? It, it's just... You know, of course, I, I didn't know. And that's why I think it's important to always talk about this because um, people just don't know. They get into it and they join the Facebook groups and everything and all they see is, is that, TFP, TFP, TFP. And they think, oh yeah, I can message this uh, model with 10 years experience and ask for TFP and I, I have one photo in my portfolio. It doesn't work like that. And same for, you know, models. Messaging same for models. Um, you yeah. have to either have a concept that everyone wants to do or you have to be on the same level or very close to that um so yeah if i message just if i get a message from a model just starting out asking for a tfp yeah yeah it, it, it's hard um and it's the same you know if a photographer who just started has no idea what they're doing messages a model with experience, they're going to be like, why would I do that? I have a portfolio yeah, that's it's better. Also, what, what else can I get from this, this shoot? Like, I've already shot everything that you're wanting to, me to do for free. There's no point kind of thing. And I same for photographers. And then they yeah. also have to teach new models while in the process. Yeah. Um, so photographers get photos for portfolio models. Yeah. Yeah, Stephen, yeah, that, that's it. You just get together, take photos, and both get photos for portfolio. And that's the point. Because if I'm going to work with a model who's just starting out, it's going to be a lot of work for me to get them to deliver the same as Annalise can deliver to me. Uh, and if you're a model, if you're a photographer and you message a model 
uh, asking for TFP and you're just starting, the model will be like, yeah, but these photos are not the same quality of what I already have. So why would I do that? Uh, so that's the whole point. So it's great to get together and, cre and be creative and try different things, but you need to find the right people to try these if you don't want to spend the money. Um, from the photographer's point of view, if you are just starting out and you have the budget, hire a model. Um, because here's the thing, you are going to learn more from the model and you can spend the time trying what you want to try. Uh, because if you're doing TFP, you don't have time to be like going through your settings, trying to figure things out and, and going through your lights and be like, oh, should I use this light this way or that way? Because everyone is there putting their time. No one's making any money. So you, yeah, you don't want to waste like people's time. time. On a photo shoot. So next week I'm doing a photo shoot with someone who's a, a new photographer. Uh, uh, like, and he's like, three hours, would that be enough? And I'm like, I'm quick to shoot. So it's, it's really up to you, whether you think three hours is enough for you. But if you, if you book me for three hours, I give you three hours kind of thing. So yeah. Oh, someone asked, um, yeah. Like, and if you're starting out model, 100% go and pay for a agency level photographer to help you get shots that are going to market you accurately. Don't waste time on going through photographers that are going to make your process longer. So I was just really lucky that I did cosplay for a while before I did modeling and I learned all that stuff. Um, as a model, what is the best way to approach a photographer? Um, maybe by just, Oh, I don't, I don't know. Like if I see a photographer who I really want to work with, I like will give them not a stalk on Instagram. That's not the right word, but I'll look at their portfolio and their range and just, you know, actively, you know, show likes and then just I'd say message and say, hi, I'm a Brisbane based model. I'm 23. I've had X, Y, Z experience. I was wondering, um, what your rates are or if you offer collaboration and if you, if, or just say, hi, if in the future you wish to shoot with me, it, it would mean a lot if you gave my profile and my portfolio a look, um, just like be really friendly and honest with your intentions, but don't, um, expect them to do TFP. Don't go, Hey, do you do TFP? That's don't just go, Hey, I'm a model. Do you do TFP? Just give them a bit of a backstory, but like just, age, experience, keep me at the top of your mind. Uh, what are your rates? Yeah, I, uh, as a photographer, the messages I get, the ones that really upset me is the ones that just say, I love your work, let's shoot. Oh yeah, that, I hate that too. That <laughs> doesn't just, say I anything. I'm seeing, yeah. That doesn't say anything. It doesn't uh, tell me if you're asking for my rates, if you're looking for a TFP shoot, uh, it just it just doesn't, doesn't say anything. I love your work. Let's thank you, but yeah. but you know when you message a model or a photographer, you need to send them information. You need to tell them what you're looking for. Uh, be polite. Be professional. Uh, just write. Just don't send the message. Oh, message a model like oh hi you're cute. Let's shoot. I mean who are you? Yeah. You know. Shoot anything like objectively about their appearance in yeah. an initial message. It's not something. Um, oh, someone said. Should you contact the model? Oh, wait, hang on, backtracking. Uh, I would use the word like, hi, um, Bruno, I really like your work. I was wondering if you offer collaborations. I'm in Brisbane and I've been modeling for this long. And then it leaves it open, not do you do TFP? Like, hi, I was wondering if you offer collaboration because then you'd be like, yes or no, or, you know, they can give like, oh, um, my rates are, and even if you treat them nicely, maybe they'll give you like, you know, they'll keep you in their mind or just give you some rates that are like appropriate for you. I, I don't know. It, treating people nicely is, goes a long way. Yeah. Um, Stephen asked before what makes a quote good for photo, uh, photograph technical camera and lighting settings or capturing emotional ability of the photograph. Um, Look, a good photograph is subjective. It's um, it's art, you know, quote, art. Um, it depends. Uh, do you like my photos? Maybe you do and maybe someone else doesn't. A good photograph uh, 
to me is about emotion. It's about the person. So I try. Here's the thing: if you are starting photography, yes, you need to get the technicals right. You know, get all the camera. Uh, know your camera, know how to use it, know everything it does, just so you don't have to think about your camera. And then you know, you learn lighting, and so you don't have to think about lighting. I can put a light setup up in five seconds, right? Because I've done that before many, many times. So I know if I put my light this way with this modifier, uh, with these settings, my first test shot might be actually the best photo of the whole photo shoot. But this comes with experience. You have to try and try, and you need to know these things. It's technical. You need to learn and practice so much so you forget. And then you can focus on what matters, which is your subject. It's the person in your photograph. That's my opinion, though. Uh, good photograph? I mean, there are lots of really famous photographers out there that I don't like the work, you know, and a lot of people do. Um, my mentor um, always says that if you're a good photographer, 50% of people will love your work and 50% of people will hate your work. Um, and that's when you know you were a really good photographer because you're actually bringing something out of them, a real emotion, hate or love. If you just want to be popular on Instagram, you just follow the trends and do whatever everyone else is doing and everyone will like your work, but no one will love your work. So yes, a good photograph can be a bad photograph for someone else. That's, I think, um, the way to go. Anyway, uh, what was the agency question? Oh, yeah. Um, um, is it best to contact models agency or the model themselves? Um, I would say be aware of whether the model has an agency. So um, if you go onto my Instagram, I list my agency. So I never get... Um, I, I, I would like people to acknowledge more the fact that I do have an agency when they message me. I obviously take on some freelance work, but I've done this for a long time, so I, I can manage that. But I think if you're asking any model, you should um, say, hi, I was wondering if I can book you. Do you prefer that I contact your agency or do you take on this? Like, do you take on bookings yourself? Like, yeah, uh, yeah, but I always uh, acknowledge I have an agent. Yeah, there are two things age. as well. Um, if, if it's a commercial work, uh, a commercial oh, yeah. work is, is anything that has a brand or a, a business involved. So if you are shooting for a client, let's say you're a photographer and you have a client, which is like, I don't know, uh, a label, and they need the model and they ask you to look for a model, then go through the agency. Because commercial rates are different. And most models don't know how to quote for a commercial job uh, and they get exploited, right? So commercial work should always go through an agency. Yeah. For portfolio photo shoots, um, some models that are signed with an agency have the right to do their own thing for that kind of shoot because some agencies don't care too much about the commission because it's too small. Um, but in, I think... As a rule, if the model has an agent, you should always try to go through the agent. Uh, you know, you can ask the model, oh, I noticed that you have an agency. If I want to shoot with you, should I contact the agency and then see what the model says. Uh, for portfolio and, you know, test shoots and collaborations. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. If, but definitely with commercial, I always get a bit, yeah. I, I straight up decline if it's commercial. I'm like, I have an agency, you need to go through them or it. And also, as a model, if you're unsure of someone or if you get, like, a strange vibe, either you know, instead of maybe – also, if, if they are a bit of a weirdo, if you say, hi, um, I have an agency, could you please book through them? It also flags this person to um, agencies because I've had um, photographers do that and then the agencies picked up on it, um, that they're a bit strange and they, like, kind of – know that if anyone's going um, going through them, they shouldn't be. Or if they get contacted, they, they know that a model in their um, books has said this, this job uh, is not, not very safe to work with or professional. Yeah, it's really good for, for the safety. Um, uh, How can a model know. protect herself if a photo shoot gets uncomfortable? Uh, well, before, I think a prevention is a good 
idea. So if you're shooting with anyone new, I still do it next week. I'm bringing Kane to a photo shoot. So establish your um, boundaries, I guess. So if you're shooting fashion and the photographer, you know, slowly starts to change it and they go, oh, can we do um, uh, implied and there's no implied in your portfolio and it's not something you do or agreed on. Um, or if they say, oh, can you do jacket but with no shirt? And they can tell if, if you are uncomfortable, just straight up say, no, I didn't agree to this. No, I didn't. Um, this isn't something I do. This isn't what I do. Um, but I've had a photographer where I had part of my wardrobe and he took it upon himself to put a tag in on my bottoms. So he came straight up into it. So I just backed off and I said, you were not allowed to touch me. And then I tried to end the shoot as quickly as possible. Um, so just keep your distance from photographers. And if you, uh, if it becomes like a real big issue, um, know how to get out of a studio. Bruno's got an awesome studio. Bruno's safe. He's, he's awesome. But he's got like um, a panel door that lets daylight in and the model can easily just... Yeah, my, needs my, to studio is, um, my studio is really easy to run away from. It's just like, yeah. oh my God, I don't want to be here. You just get out. It's, it's really yeah. 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 In right. that situation that I was in, it was a home studio. And I'd shot with this person Oh, seemingly lovely. I was just like appalled that they thought that kind of thing was okay. Um, hang on. So someone says, as a teen model, we are always encouraged to ask our agency if we are shooting with someone. We, yeah, definitely. Yeah, teen models yeah, need yeah. to be really careful. Yeah, photographers, if you want to shoot with an underage model and they have an agency, you definitely go through the agency. Don't message girls under 18 on Instagram. Just don't. Um, and if they don't have an agency, uh, hopefully the account will be managed by their parents. Right? So when you message them, you're talking to the parents, hopefully. You don't want to be uh, like I'm turning 39 soon. So you don't want to be a you know, 40 year old male photographer on Instagram messaging 15 year old girls. You don't want to be that person. Right. So, um, yeah, hopefully the a model on Instagram who's underage will have a parent managing the account. But if they have an agency, don't even message them or message them asking, oh, I would love to shoot with you. Can I have the contact details for your agency? So you're doing it right from the start. Um, yeah, you don't want to be that, that guy. Don't be that guy. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's see what else we have on the list. Well, we have the agency versus freelance. I think that's pretty much what we talked about. Um, yeah, it, it's it's um, good for commercial work. Like, it just gives you more options as a model. So it's not just, like, I, I'm happy to do training with new photographers. It's where a lot of my work comes from. But I wouldn't get commercial work. I wouldn't get um, a lot of the work that I do if I wasn't with an agency. Um, and photographers, it makes it safer, it backs them up, and yeah, it makes... I think um, I, I will just yeah. throw some random numbers on because when we talk about commercial jobs, people don't really understand why. Um, so, um, let's say I want to shoot Annalise to be the new face of um, Brisbane-based label, you know, some I don't know active wear or something, right? Uh, Annalise's rate for a photo shoot could be, I don't know, uh, for an uh, active wear It's like shoot. 100 an hour on my fashion rates, yeah. Yeah, so $100 an hour, and then I hire Annalise for a uh, four hours photo shoot, so $400. But this, um, for a commercial shoot, this is only for the shoot. The client does not have the rights to use Annalise's image from that shoot because it's commercial. So they can't just use the photos, right? So the calculation for uh, a commercial rate is based on um, geographical location. So let's say, are these photos gonna be used in Australia or in Europe or in the world? Um, and then time frame, is it for six months or 12 months or two years? Uh, and the medium as well. Is this only for Instagram? Is it for a website? Is it for a billboard? And this 
like calculating this price is really hard, very complicated, and most people don't know how to do it. And I'm talking about photographers and models, right? This goes both ways. It's um, like they do commercials like a couple of years ago, and then they rerun the commercial. And exactly. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. So, so if you were shooting for a client and they want you to pay four hundred dollars to a model for a commercial shoot, that's not going to cover, right? So that might cover the shoot, the rates for the time, but not for the usage. And this is both photographers and models. So that's why you use an agent because they know how to calculate that. They know, and it's complicated. There are some online calculators, but it's just tricky. So let's say we shoot something for a brand and it's only for Instagram, right? And we charge, I don't know, analysts will charge $400 for four hours plus another $400 for them to use these photos for a year on Instagram only. If they decide that they want to print a photo in a billboard, they're going to have to pay more. The client, not the photographer, the client. So they're going to, let's just throw some, let's say like, oh, uh, it's a billboard for the capitals in Australia. So it's for a year. So maybe $2,000, right? To have Annalisa's yeah. face next to a brand because she's tied to that brand. Um, so that's why commercial jobs you need an agent for. And then if they pay for a year and they decide to use those photos, you know, again for another year, they have to pay again. Right. Uh, Bella. Bella is also with the same agency as you yeah, are. Yeah, Bella, she, she, yeah, she did the commercial for Dominance. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. she actually did three, I think. And she got paid to do the commercial and usage rights to show that commercial on TV and internet for one year in Australia. And then Domino's decided to use the commercial in America. So she got paid again. Awesome. Yeah. See? See, like, I wouldn't know any of that stuff. That's why when I do commercials, it's just like, okay, they, they set these rates. You do the time on set. And, or like I'm talking about film, not photography now. And then like with Fight Night, uh, they reuse the commercial again for 2019. I'm kind of hoping they use it again for 2020 because of COVID. They've not been able to film. <laughs> but, um, yeah. yeah, it's good. Um, someone asked up here, does photographic artistic passion ever get lost in repetitiveness of its job? Um, no. Um, yeah. y well, we, sometimes. Okay, so um, uh, today I had a client this morning. Um, Yep. And because I haven't been shooting for a while and she hired me to do my thing, it was amazing. You know, it really depends on the job you're doing. If you start shooting the same thing over and over and it's not something you really like, yes, it becomes another job like sitting in front of a computer all day. Um, you need to find you, the thing you love to do. Um, so I love photographing people. So I shoot headshots for the agency. Uh, and then I shoot model portfolios and I shoot e-commerce. Um, you know, there's always a person in front of me. I don't shoot products. I don't shoot landscapes. I don't shoot families, even though, you know, the people, but it's a lot of people. I don't shoot events. Um, I don't shoot newborns. I don't shoot a lot of stuff. I, I have my niche because that's what I love and I don't want to get tired of it. I want to keep being a photographer and loving what I do. So you need to find the stuff that you love and stick to it. Um, yeah. If you start doing things you don't like, yeah, you, you're going to hate it eventually. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, with that, I, I guess it's also, I mean, I could say, yeah, I absolutely love modeling, which I do. I love modeling. I love acting. But if you know that you can do something, I don't do it for free. Like, I love teaching. I wouldn't go teach a class of six hours for free either. I mean, I collaborate a lot with Bruno and then say I do some body paint, special effects things on my own time because that's that's like a realm that I'm really passionate about. I'll happily have three hours worth of prosthetics put on me, have some photos, do TFP for the photos and, you know, be in a bubble of creativity. But if it's if it's like, um, oh, we're going to go shoot in a forest and you're going to do your thing, um, I've already done it. So I know artistically that, it's already been done on my list. So if I'm good at something, don't do it for free. So. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, if that's the thing about, go, you know, going back to the TFP, I get a beginner model wanting to have the portfolio shoot that I do. I mean, I do that all the time, 
why would I do that with that person? It doesn't add to my portfolio because I have that in my portfolio already. So, um, you know, you have to think about these things when you message people as well. Like, why would this guy want to shoot with me for free if I want what he has to offer, you know? Uh, and it's the same for a model. Oh, I, I love you. Look, I would love to shoot with you. And then you're like, oh, I want to shoot you like this. And the model will be like, I've done that. I have that in my yeah. portfolio. So why would I do it for free? Yeah. Um, also, another thing. So uh, if I say, I haven't said this, my friend has said this, but kind of relevant. I'm sure it'll pop up in my future. She doesn't do um, a lot of like implied or art nude. She's very picky. She's got like a really cool look. And she said, oh, no, sorry, I don't do this. And the photographer proceeded. Actually, this has happened to me as well would proceed to lurk through their profile and find something where an, a situation where they did do it and they posted it and they go, actually you do, you need to like, that's lying. And like pointing out that they actually do something when the model should be able to dictate when or when they don't do a certain theme. No. Yeah. There's no harm in asking, but yeah. don't, if they, if they decline, don't go searching. Yeah, because I've done it in the past, it doesn't mean I want to do it now. And it doesn't mean I want to do it with you. Yeah, yeah. If I get a weird vibe from a photographer, uh, uh, I'm like, oh, I'm not offering that at the moment. Apologies or, you know. Uh, or I'll, just... I'll be like, I'll help you shoot fashion. Um, I'm just not doing this at the moment. Yeah, no is no. If, if a model or a photographer says no, just don't push yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Never mm -hmm. don't ask a second time. Um, I'll just quickly run through, through some things because we kind of talked about it. Yeah, if you're shooting um, with a model and you book the model through an agency, don't get to the shoot and then tell them that they could make more money booking directly, right? Uh, because they will tell the agency and you're going to get burned. Don't, you, know, you hire the model through the agency and then you're shooting and you say, oh, yeah, if you... Um, Next time, if I book you directly, you know, you don't have to pay, you know, the agency commission. Don't do that. Models have an agency for a reason. Yeah, don't say they, it. They have an agency. Don't, don't say, oh, that's kind of like gaslighting really, isn't it? Saying, oh, if you book me directly, because then that opens up a whole realm of like, oh, what are you trying to get from me kind of deal? Because then there's no security. Yeah. Yeah. Just Half the last week or the this week is something before. about, yeah, something about agency models that you, yeah, just keep that in mind. Don't, don't try to you know, go behind the agency because it's bad for everyone. It's bad for you. It's bad for the model. Uh, it's just don't do it. You know, I got a call the other day from the agency owner because a guy did that with a model. Uh, and because I introduced him, uh, you know, he called me. So don't do it. They, the agencies get upset with the photographer, with the model, and with whoever managed to get them together. Just, just it's bad for everyone. Don't, don't do it. Um, there's some other things that you shouldn't do in a photo shoot. Um, I had the story about the photographer shooting a 16-year-old girl and talking a lot about nudity, the whole shoot, not asking to shoot nudes, but talking about nudity. Don't do it. They're underage. Don't do it. You know, her mom was like, what, what, what? Her um, mom was there at the same time. Yes. Goodness me. Um, yeah. And... Um, Choose your words as well. You know, you, you don't know. Well, if they're underage, choose your words. But even if they're not, you know, you don't talk about the boobs. Yeah, chest. Right? Don't say boobs. Say chest or something chest. else. Just, chest. You know, just, just choose your words. You know, eventually, if you become friends, like with Annalise and I, we, we joke about a lot of yeah. stuff, right? So we can do it. But I never said boobs you know, for the last, like, four photo shoots, probably. I don't think you've <laughs> ever said the term boobs. I think you said chest. Probably. Yeah, Always. probably not. We've known each other. It, I don't it, actually know. I, that's the thing. And even if you did, but if another photographer said boobs, I'd be like, and there has to be, like, a, like, a level of friendship, like, yeah, 100%. Like, there are photographers who I'm good friends with. If they say the word boobs, I'm just going to be like, Haha, a nipple. Like, I should also yeah. be thinking it's funny at the same time. Um... Harry asked, what's the right number of photos to provide uh, from a TFP shoot? Uh, Harry, I'm the wrong person to ask that because 
um, because I stopped photoshopping, so I don't care. They can have them all. <laughs> um, yeah, how many photos you get from our shoots? I don't know, like 200, 300. Yeah, I get loads. Um, uh, because... I, like sometimes you'll send like edited versions, and how many of those? Maybe six, ten, six. But oh. you don't. If it's a shoot that that we have in mind that we're going to Photoshop, yes, I'm going to Photoshop a handful of photos. Uh, but because most of my shoots are not Photoshopped, um, you know, it's easy to edit because you go and you sync with the other ones that have the same light, and then you do the same for the next setup and next setup. So, and when we shoot in the studio, the photos are ready straight away. Um, I, I would say if you have to go to Photoshop, um, it's usually between five and ten. Yeah, I'd say five, ten. Um, I, I think about it like when I go to cosplay conventions, everything's to you, everything's like I just collaborate with many different photographers. Usually, if I don't know them, or like if I'm friends with a photographer and they know me, they'll Dropbox me pretty much them all. If it's someone who I ran into, usually about five to ten. That's yeah, about. I, no. I, I still go through them and I remove anything that's bad. You know, if you're blinking or if it's out of focus or if I, you know, got the framing wrong, you know, I'll try to remove the bad ones because I don't want them out there. But all the other good photos can, can go. Um, yeah. But Someone asked how to get into a modeling career. And I think she's a cosplayer, which is my niche. Okay. Um, so I, is she still here? Goodness, I hope she is. I'm just going to check if she's not. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I did cosplay for a while. I started cosplaying in 2011. And then in 2014, after I graduated high school, I did a couple of years of just TFP work, but I was always very picky. Like, because I did cosplay, I had opportunity in public grounds to collaborate with lots of different photographers. And I found ones that were, you know, they were keen to be like, oh, you should just like do, style your own shoot and we'll do some photos. And I was really lucky that they were like really, really like nice professional photos. So I made a bit of a portfolio. And then I think in 2016, so two years of just freelance, I didn't do paid work. Um, 2016, I got scooped up by my first agency and your first agency might not work. Um, I also got scooped up by my current agency, but if you are wanting to apply for agencies, apply for many, um, with a decent portfolio and just, you know, go to the, not audition, that's the wrong word, go to so no, you a book an or a meeting. You book an appointment. Uh, appointment, yeah. Again. See if they're right for you and, yeah. All right. So, uh, Will, um, from my experience, usually models like to have as many photos as they can. Never, I've never yeah. seen a model saying, oh, no, no, just give me five. I've never seen that. Um, if you offer more, they will take more. Um, should the photo shoot begin with a conversation about safety and security, such as exits? Um, um, yeah, but not like that. Like when someone gets into my studio for the first time, um, I just show them around. I mean, it's a small space anyway. Just like, oh, the bathroom is there, the the changing room is there, and you know, I keep I will keep this door open and I will just close this one, so we get the natural light, but we get privacy. Um, you know, this is how you open the door if you want to. That's it. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't go through much more like that because they, when they get in, they already know. You know, they get in and especially if they've been to other small studios that are really dark, they will be like, oh, this is actually, you know, quite all right. I mean, their door is made of thin plastic. I can just run yeah. through it. <laughs> so... Oh yeah, no, no, she's she's good. Um, yeah, just show them around. You don't have to talk about exits. I mean, they can see the exits as long as you yeah. don't lock them. Don't lock them inside, and they can see the exits. Yeah, I don't like locked doors. If anyone, lo I don't. If you see anyone locking a door, ask that they unlock it before you do anything. Also, this happened to me once. Um, uh, something was being filmed. The whole shoot was being filmed without consent. I didn't consent to it. 
they said that they were filming to check the lighting and then I realised that it was continued to be filmed. It was just... That was that was the weird guy that I was talking about previously. It, it's honestly... I've been doing this for this long and he was trying that on me. Imagine if this would have been a youngster. Like, oh, cringe. Um, someone asks about... What is the commercial situation with figure work, such as hands and legs, where the model is not recognisable? Is a separate commercial payment on top of the shoot fee needed? Yeah, it's still commercial work. Um, it's probably going to be cheaper, though, if there's no yeah. face. You, you can see that when you go to um, labels' websites, um, you can tell if, if you can see the model's face, uh, and some brands will use just the body, they will chop the, you know, the head off uh, because it's cheaper. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, yeah, it's still commercial, but the price will be different. If you can't see the model's face, um, then it's usually cheaper. And you have to understand as well, there are hand models. Right? So when yeah, you see... I've done, I've done jewelry, it's still, you get... Like, yeah. I think for... It's similar. It's it's. Yeah, it's, it's still it's, commercial. Um, so, yeah, because maybe you, if you're doing rings you need yeah. a hand model it's, it's not, it's not just any model yeah but you know if you're just shooting the hand you want a hand model and that's too commercial work yeah yeah it's usually less well it depends you know if you want the most beautiful hand on the planet you're probably going to pay a lot of money there's probably someone out there with the best hand in the in the business <laughs> so you don't know um, but yeah, it's commercial. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's for a brand, it's commercial and people should charge accordingly because if we don't, uh, eventually there's not going to be commercial work anymore and then uh, I don't know what we're doing this because the the goal is to become a commercial photographer and a commercial model because that's where the money is and that's where you can do a job today and get paid 10 years from now. You know, still get paid. I mean, you know, yeah. you can do a job today every year for that that's the commercial world you know so um yeah um hang on i recommend that's carlos carlos um so i know that harry hired a studio from cam atri and that's a really big studio and it's in bull and gabba and that one i think he hires it out so yeah I don't, I don't really know. Um, Urban Jungle, I think, higher studios. Yeah, there's the warehouse studios, really warehouse good. Warehouse studios. It's quite, yeah, it's quite big, though. It's, um, it's a bit overkill for some people, but it's amazing. It's, to me, it's the best studio out there. Um, yeah. It just depends um, what you want. Yeah, look, um, I do most of my work in a home studio. Um, if I'm doing a commercial job, I might hire a studio, but... My shoots, all the photos you see of Annalise that I've done in the studio, they've been here. It's a small space. It's a garage, single car garage that I converted into a studio, and it's enough. You just need to be a bit creative. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if you had my garage. It's big. It's a big garage. Yeah, your garage is awesome. Probably would be, <laughs> I don't know, it would be overkill for a studio. It's got a big, it's got a big wall. Um, uh, ooh. Anna mentioned filming a photo shoot. Is it actually safer for the photo shoot to be filmed? For the okay, the shoot that was filmed, it was an art nude shoot. So that means there's no yeah. privacy really. There's no choice in what you don't know what they're going to do with that. And I honestly, to this day, I was in such like fight or flight mode. That I didn't really care. So it depends on the concept, but it's not okay to film something without. Hey, I'm filming this for BTA. Give purpose. Give like I'm filming this for behind the scenes. I wouldn't fly with I'm filming this for safety because you never know where those videos are going to end up. Honestly, yeah, no. you never do. No, I I thought about getting one of those uh, fake camera security cameras for my studio um, because you know I have equipment there. So I thought, oh, if I just get one of those fake ones, just so people think that you know there's a security camera there. But then I'm like. Yeah, but, you know, I get models coming here and there's a camera there. Even though it's fake, they're going to look like, oh, hang on. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, no. No. yeah it, um, it would give me alarm bells. I Honestly, I don't even do behind the scenes. Um, mm. 
Oh, well, apart I from know. your tutorials, but that's that's yeah, a purpose. But that's a tutorial. You know? We are filming yeah. something. We are filming the shoot because that's the whole idea. But you don't see me putting my phone on a tripod and doing behind the scenes just for the sake of it. I, I, I maybe I should do sometimes. Yeah, we've done um, I've done we, it with some shoots. We've done a live like ones done... together, right? Yeah. Yeah, we've done a live. But then you know when you're doing it, and so you know what you can do in a photo shoot. It's not like the whole shoot is being filmed. Yeah. yeah. We can film this little bit, but not this one. And this little bit, and yeah. not this one. And yeah. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah. Um, da -da -da -da. Do you pay models up front, or do they invoice you? Um, oh, okay, so back to the dodgy guy. So it was Aunt Nude. And he paid me less than my hourly rate. He like for one hour, and he or oh, for oh, it was bad. He paid me one hundred and fifty dollars for four hours, and I was so terrified. I took the money and just drove. I was yeah. The the mm, payment it's a tricky part. So if I'm getting if I am getting paid, so if I if you know if I get a client, I charge fifty percent for the booking. I know it's a lot. Most people charge 20 or 10. I charge 50% and it's non-refundable. This is when I'm getting hired as a photographer. Unless it's a, a client that I know, like a brand that I work with or the agency and stuff like that. But if someone messes me and like, oh, I want to do a portfolio shoot, 50% for the booking, non-refundable. And if you cancel on me, you, you know, I might reschedule if I'm free or not, this money is mine. Uh, that stops people from just being, you know, just booking you and not never showing up. Um, if I'm hiring a model, um, so it's, it's funny because this is, this is a paradox. My advice to models is charge in advance. Yeah. Um, don't even start to shoot if you haven't been paid in full, right? But I don't pay models in advance. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's I've actually adopted that. So if it's someone I know, um, yeah. like as of, I think last, this year, I adopted that since that scare. And I was like, okay, let's okay. it happened for a reason. And I invoice on uh, Google Sheets now. I have an invoicing system. I have like hourly rates, so I can just open it up. And when I'm messaging the person, I'm like, okay, so what, what concepts and you click the options and it's also, it gives them more background that I have set rates and it's not negotiable. And then, um, yeah, they pay in advance if, if it's not someone I already know. So agency work, obviously you have to be paid when the agency pays you. Yeah. Bruno pays me later, but it, uh, other people, I do cash in land for some people I know, but um, I don't work with anyone new from now on with cash in hand. It's all pay in advance. Yeah, it's um, it's like, um, so for my events, so uh, photo walks and workshops, uh, the models get paid after the event as soon as they invoice me. So, you know, yeah. if, we have a, if we have a workshop and I'm dealing with the model directly and they, we finish the workshop, if they invoice me straight away, I pay straight away. Um, if I'm working with the agency, as soon as the event's done, I will ask the agency to invoice me. And as soon as they invoice me, I pay them and then they pay the model. Um, uh, for the tutorials that we're doing, every time someone buys one of my tutorials, I have my own system that I've, I've been building. And I, I love it's it. a work in progress. Such a good system. It's, 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 getting, it's getting awesome. It's but good. yeah, so the, the models have access to my system. And every time I sell a product, they have a balance there. Uh, you know, you have this much money sitting here from this uh, sale. So they can request the money when they want. So they can invoice me through that. They can upload the invoice to the system. And then I get a notification being like, oh, Annalise wants to get paid. And then I go and pay straight away. Because yeah. these products, you know, we share the profits. So it, um, sometimes it might not be worth like even typing the invoice for like 20 bucks, right? So you want to- Sometimes I don't money. mind. I'll be like, at the moment, I just moved home. I'm like, 20 bucks goes a long way. So yeah. It's just like, hey, you got money. But um, with that system, it actually gives like your your standard, your outstanding balance. Like if if I, you know, log on one day and I see a tutorial sold overnight, I still have like the option of sending the invoice. 
Um, but yeah. also just for me, for records, with moving house and showing proof of income, even if I do cash in hand, I still make up an invoice for it. Like from now on, that's what I'm doing because it's just so hard as a freelancer to show proof of income yeah. to anything. Like what, like even with the sole trader Centrelink thing, they're like proof of income. I'm like, oh my gosh. But I've gotten really good at that stuff lately. If it would have been two years ago, I would have been stuck. Yeah, that's a good thing. We actually don't even have that in our topic list that we are going to have to skip a lot of stuff. But yeah, uh, if, you, um, if you were working as a photographer or as a model, you have to keep track of your finance. Uh, just yeah. keep track of it. Because if you have an ABN, uh, you can claim tax. So, you know, just if, even if it's cash in hand, just make sure that you, um, you have some sort of, some way to, to keep record of that. Because, um, you know, it's like Annalise, because she has an ABN, if she goes to hairdress, the hairdresser, she can claim that in tax because it's, it's part of the job, right? Yeah. It's an expense for the job. Yeah, I can, um, if I do, if I don't pay for gym membership. I work at a gym. Uh, but like gym memberships, um, skin care, hair care, like a lot of expenses are covered for models. And I, I go to someone to do my tax. Like I would not be able to do my tax myself. And this person knows what I do for a living and they're able to do all this stuff for me. So if you're a model, I recommend going somewhere to get your tax done. You have to pay, but anyway, uh, it's worth it for me personally. Um, all right, so, okay, there's a question from Stephen. Stephen, is that a question for me or Annalise? Uh, philosophically, what does need for the should allow to be created that would not be possible otherwise? Um, not sure. And Tara's question, of, uh, like, Grace gets offers over Instagram all the time. Um, Tara... To tell someone is legit, check the work, check the people they work with, and then message these people. Or ask me. I mean, you can always yeah. message me. Whenever I, uh, actually, Bruno, whenever I um, have someone that I'm like, I can't believe this guy, or have you worked with this guy? Have you heard of this guy? I always just screenshot the messages and I send them to Bruno. And I'm like, this yeah, guy, and I'm like, what do I do, Bruno? <laughs> like, and he could yeah, do that with models too. It's, it's, it's tricky, that. yeah, it's tricky. But you can message the models that this person worked with, or you can message me, and I can have a look. Because I'm, I'm getting really good at reading, you know, Instagram profiles and Facebook to see if the person is legit or not. Uh, sometimes some people, I, I can even see some people come across a bit creepy, but they are just inexperienced. They're not really bad, you know. So yeah, yeah, you just need to like check everything. Yeah, um, and that, come back to the. And, oh, sorry, question. just that, that because that actually links to something that we were going to say about for the photographers, how you present yourself online. Just you know, have a professional account that looks very professional. Be polite, and with your personal social media, just. I know it's easy for us to see something and. I just want to. Oh, I just want to tell them the truth. I just want to say my my piece and just just don't stay away from anything that's um... cute or hot or the flame emoji that I get like ten times a day from like some yeah. photographers. If no, someone just, sends me like... a flame emoji, then it's like I mean once yeah. off or twice, you know that's all good. But if they're saying yeah, like, but, you know, like, like things oh. like uh, my personal Facebook profile is public. Everything I post there is public. And you go there, you, know, you don't see me ranting about stuff. You don't see me complaining about the government or, com you know, you don't see that kind of stuff because uh, that's not who I am. And I don't want, because I'm, you know, here having wine and I'm pissed about something, I go there and I vent online and then people are going to check me because, you know, people check all the professionals and they're going to be like, oh, this guy's so negative and he's always complaining and, you know, he doesn't like anyone. Who wants to work with people like that? In the middle of a foot, like, I'm going to be like, oh, do I actually want to be in a, a, in a space with someone who has the ability to get that angry or, like, you know, or, mm, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> Same with models. Um, if you're, I reckon, um, just be, keep your Instagram clean. I, I like, 
I've always banter a lot on my stories, but I've um, since taking it mainstream, I keep my Instagram very clean. Yeah, and it's like, I don't have it's a spam like, account on Instagram. Yeah, but it's like you're a vegan, right? Yeah. And I'm not. Uh, and you post stuff about vegan, but you're not saying on, on Facebook, oh, you know, if you eat meat, just delete me from your friends. Oh, no. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's what I'm talking like about. My just don't, don't... Facebook is just my personal, like, Instagram yeah. is like my business. My yeah, Facebook you know, page just, is uh, more business. Just, just be careful with what you post online, even on your personal account, because people will find that and... You know, people don't want to work with with people who are negative and and have this bad vision of what. I mean, I'm a very um, pessimist. Is that something I can say? I, I I don't believe in mankind. I think we're doomed. But I try to be optimistic. Yeah, I try to be optimistic yeah, about I'm it. Like you know, such an optimist, but I'm lucky uh, that I think like that. You know, uh, just uh, I'm not gonna post stuff online about oh my god we're gonna kill the planet and and that's what I think but I don't do that online you know we will have a beer and then I'll talk about this stuff but I don't post it online because anyone can find it my commercial clients can see that and be like oh do we want to li be linked with Bruno you know if he keeps talking about this uh, just, uh, yeah. I'd also like your portfolio as a photographer from I see that it's like the same kind of work like glamour like a lot of naked ladies which is fine but maybe have two separate accounts for that so have like a headshotty one and then inquire about your work on there and like don't message a 16 year old girl or even 18 year old girl and then have like a censored photo only instagram it just would put me off yeah. immediately yeah yeah if all your work is it's like too much and then you message someone being like oh do you want to do a fashion shoot and then the model will check your work and it's like do you do fashion shoot? Do you want to do a fashion <laughs> shoot? Like, <laughs> because, yeah. because you don't have that in your portfolio, so it's a bit, mm. um, all right, let's try to answer Stephen. Uh, I'm still not sure about the question. Though. What does nude photo shoot allow to be created that would not be possible otherwise? Even I emotional. Question. I think that it has to create something that would not be possible otherwise. If it, if it is possible otherwise, then do it otherwise just but it also depends on the photographer i know i work with photographers who exclusively they shoot that kind of stuff and i'm like yep whatever cool my rates are higher win-win i don't need to use the photos but it's that's not for my artistic thing i know that bruno and i did like a shower shoot so it's necessary but in a lot of the photos we just crop them we get the same effect or yeah we um yeah just add something that to it. But we did that because it was a tutorial, it was to actually show how it's done. Um, but you're not going to see those. You're not going to see those photos in my portfolio. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not the work that I want to be hired for. Um, no, Stephen, you were not offensive at all. We're just trying to figure out no, the question. No, yeah. I'm just so open and honest. I, I think that it's it's such a hard topic to learn about because not many people feel comfortable talking about. Oh, how do I approach people for this kind of work, or what, why do people even shoot it in the first place you know yeah um uh it's like i don't shoot at art nude it's not my thing mm. you know uh no. i don't do art nude it's more uh, when i shoot something it's fashion um we did that tutorial so it has a little bit of uh, not really isn't that it's not even Plus what you do is art no. nude. it's just it's just um portraits but like because all of your stuff i mean kate your kate moss stuff it's like yeah sure um something's exposed but it's not about it's fashion um it's, it's yeah fashion, it's yeah. either portrait or fashion i don't uh because i don't consider myself an artist uh i'm i'm a, I'm a photographer I'm, I'm technical and i solve problems that's what i do uh i i was never an artist in my life my background is technology you know i was in it for 24 years um, so I don't consider my work art at all. Otherwise, I would be selling, uh, you know, large prints somewhere in a gallery. Um, um, we have 23 seconds remaining. Oh, really? I didn't know we had um, it's an hour a time limit. Stream. That's all right. All right, let's say goodbye. We have a lot, of, a lot to cover. Maybe we do another one next week. Yeah, let's do Thursday. Do, do next Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, cool. okay.
Yeah. Okay. Bring your Thanks, questions. Guys. I'll save yeah. this and bye.